Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we are working on a little side project. So I'm waiting on a couple of parts for the 39 Ford. And uh, at, like probably all of you guys, you have a thousand other projects that linger. So instead of it just bailing for the day, I like to try and get something done. So uh, one of the things I, I do when I go to swap meets, a lot of times I buy stuff that Sometimes people might turn their nose at uh, that may need some repair or have been repaired and I think I can repair it better. So this uh, 3536 Ford Dash, I found a Hershey and uh, somebody had, when they removed it from the car, they had cut it right through the center here where, uh, where the windshield crank was and they cut it open, mangled it. I cut, I use cut loosely, it's pretty bad. But uh, looking at it, the, overall the dash was really, really solid. I know that I have a nice waterfall for the center here. So I figured what I work on today is just showing you guys a quick little project to how I would repair uh, damage like this and how we can make it uh, something that looks a little bit nicer than what it does right now. So show you guys the process and hopefully you guys will uh, find it helpful. Okay, so the first thing I do is I grab a bunch of hammers. I like to have all different shape hammers. So I usually grab a handful of my favorites and uh, take them over to where we're working. So first thing we're gonna do is try and get this area that's torn. Just uh, see what, what it's like, what I could hammer back together. I'm hoping, it looks like a lot of the material is there and it was just like cut poorly rather than uh, cut with a torch where material is blown away. Uh, so what I'd like to do is try and hammer this back and see if I could get some of the metal to come back together that I can just make one tidy uh, seam weld right through the center there. If not, I'm going to have to cut all this out and that's going to require two welds, which is more finish work. So um, if we can get this to hammer back, hopefully that'll, that'll uh, save us a little bit of work. So I'm going to try that first on my anvil here and see what we can get. Find a good spot. There we go. All right, after a little bit of hammer and dolly, or not even hammer and dolly, just a little bit of hammering on the anvil, uh, I got it pulled back together a little bit better. Uh, you can see like in here and down closer to the hole, it's actually, uh, it is um, like basically touching, not too bad, but up here at the top, they mangled it a little more. We still got a pretty good gap and it's, and the metal is just a little waffled in there. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna try, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but I'm gonna cut just this really, um, really rough stuff out and then, uh, or sand it smooth, and then I'm gonna try and start tack welding in there with the TIG and see if I can get it to actually um, glue together. And then we can maybe make just one little piece to weld in the top where there's that big gap and then we can kind of finish it out. Uh, if it gets to be too big, uh, what I'll actually do is go out to like here and here and weld in a patch just in this area here, but I want to see what I can do with just leaving as much original metal as possible. We will, we will see.
All right, so I got this, uh, the seam all welded. I ended up just going with, uh, filling it with filler rod. And uh, I know it looks a little ugly right now, but we're, the goal is to actually fill all of the tears and, and fill up the, the missing area, and, uh, and then we can start working it down. So what I was finding as I was welding is there was thin spots where it, it, it tore, where it tore out, and as I was welding, it was starting to get thin, so I started adding more filler rod and, and blending it all together. So like I said, I know this looks a little ugly. I'll, I'll knock just these highs down and get it to what I need. The, uh, the underside, other than this little spot in the back that we're gonna probably address last. We got full penetration here, which is the key. Again, I know it's a little ugly, but this is just a quick, easy way to, to repair something like this uh, without having to do a bunch of um, extra work forming pieces. I was able to kind of fill that seam in. So I'm gonna uh, knock down the highs and then I'll start hammering and dollying and get it in and everything smoothed out pretty good. And then I'll, uh, we'll see where we're at after we do that and see if it needs any additional work. So step, step two, again, still don't look very pretty, but we're, uh, we got the highs knocked down. There's a little low spot right here that you can't really get to because of the, uh, the flange. So what I'm gonna do is, is get in with, a, with another tool I have and hammer with like almost like a chisel in there, get that area raised up and then we can start making it better, knock the highs down and keep going and going until we get it a little better. But I'm gonna take over the anvil, anvil and get it smash down a little more. That's the nice thing with these TIG welds is you're able to actually hammer and dolly and smash the welds down versus uh, them being harder than the uh, surrounding metal. better. And I could probably knock some more of these highs down on the weld and then keep bringing everything up to fix that area but already looking a lot better. Just that little bit of hammer work. All right so I uh, pulled out a tool that I've had hanging on the wall for a while that I got I don't know probably years ago when I was picking and uh, it's an old uh, cast English wheel like a handheld English wheel I found this on a barn floor somewhere that I was picking covered in dirt and crap and I just kind of put it on the wall for, you know, whenever I would need it. So today it seems to be, uh, I think, a good use for that. So what I'm going to actually use this for, this one is interesting because it has a brass upper wheel with a steel lower wheel. And uh, I think this is probably, it's more of a smoothing tool that was probably used on the car or in a vice like this. So I thought it would be a good use because my wheels on my big, F.J. Edwards English wheel uh, are a little wide. I don't really have too many narrow wheels, which I should work on making. Um, so this wheel has a real narrow wheel in it. So we could slip it in and actually use it as a planishing tool. So I can get real tight close to the edge where the, uh, where the, where the bent edge is. And I can work back and forth with just light pressure on it. And this will help take out some of the highs and lows in it without really stretching the metal and go a little looser. And 
and the areas where it's loose, where it feels like the panel's loose, I know that it's not too wavy there, or there's not too many highs and lows. actually working pretty good. So what it did is it uh took out a lot of the waviness and ugliness from us from just being banged around and cut and especially right in here it's nice and smooth everything's pretty much in line is flowing how we want right here near the edge there's just a little more there's a low spot there that the wheel's not going to fix that but um, I think I'm going to bend these edges out so they're not hitting on here on the edge of the tool and then I can get in a little closer in this little spot right next to the bend. I can, um, I should be able to work a little more, get it smoothed out, and then this thing will be good enough for government work, especially since it's covered with trim. So I'll work these little spots here and then uh, see where we're at there at the end. All right, so I did a little bit of tapping around with the metal, and uh, in the last shot you saw, I welded up this back seam uh, in the back here where the lip folds over, and what you saw, uh, I didn't describe it as it was welding, but basically I leave a long piece of metal on the back side, I tack it in, form it around, and then I weld up the seam, and then I cut it off, because what happens is uh, you'll fight the edges burning away, and if you have the it cut as short as you want it, it will actually burn away on you. It'll be, a, it'll be a pain to get everything nice and parallel. So I leave it long, weld up the seam all the way past where everything intersects, cut it off, and then I grind everything flat, and you get a seam that is, uh, is pretty good and doesn't look like it's been uh, modified too much. So a couple little low spots still in this um, if we're gonna be picky, but we're not metal finishing this thing absolutely perfect. It doesn't even really need body work because it gets covered by 
this waterfall. So I always do this with these 35, 36 dashes. When I see parts of the swap meet for cheap, I will pick up one or, or a bunch of pieces and eventually I'll put together a nice dash either for one of my projects or eventually I'll, I'll trade or sell to somebody else. So I got a really nice um, waterfall uh, earlier in the summer and then a Hershey I picked up this dash that was really cheap but it had to cut down the center. So now that I have that on, slide this guy on like this. Flex it over like that and uh, fits pretty nicely. And then we can put our little flathead screws down in the bottom right about there. So I'll put those in, but as you can see, that repair is totally covered, uh, but I still try to make the, the repair as nice as I possibly can uh, until I get to the point of diminishing return, which is uh, where we were at with this. It could have gotten a tiny bit better and I could have uh, picked up the low spots, but really it was plenty nice. Uh, I could paint or, or prime that and that area will be sealed up until we're ready to actually use it. But uh, now we have another piece of the puzzle. So now what I'll do is start looking for uh, a cheaper, affordable, ashtray or black off plate to put in there, a glove box lid, and eventually I'll have a complete dash that maybe we'll use for a future project. No idea, but for now to hang on the wall in the, what I call the archives until I'm ready to uh, use it on a future project. So that's all I have for this one. And hopefully you guys found this video uh, insightful and maybe you got a couple of tricks for yourself out of the video that will help you with a future repair, or maybe it'll give you the confidence to buy something at the swap meet that's really cheap, that's damaged, and repair it for yourself to save money on your next project. As always, we do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. If you haven't, definitely subscribe. Drop us a comment down below. What do you think of the 3536 dash? Thanks, guys. Catch you later.